All right, I'm not gonna lie, that never gets old. Hey, so I, I took a, you know, just a weekend, just kind of a break. I did a whole bunch of projects and I've had this machine, I mean, I spent almost a month. And I, within that month, I got everything assembled, got everything tested, calibrated, did all those really cool things, got it trammed and started producing some really cool things. And <clears throat> within that month, man, I have learned so much about the software, the, the capabilities of this machine. And I figured, hey, let's, let's just do, do a quick video. I'm talking about the five things that I really, really enjoy about it. So just a quick overview. This is a five by 10 uh, Avid CNC. It has an AV70S spindle. This thing is super awesome. We're gonna talk about this specifically. Um, and then we'll go over some of the attachments that I put on it and some of the results that I've been uh, kind of getting out of it. So yeah, so number one, let's talk about assembly. <clears throat> so I cannot tell you how awesome this thing was to assemble. Now, you know, I upgraded, I already had a CNC machine, so I kind of knew what, you know, rail systems and squaring and all those other things that needed to go into it. Uh, but their instructions and their packaging, when they dropped this thing off on my, in my driveway, I mean, it was just, it was top tier. And that made things so much easier putting this thing together. So from start to finish, it was probably, uh, I would say a good week, right? But you know, nine to five job, at night, I always started doing the assembly. Um, it took me about five you know, total days to get everything assembled, tested, calibrated, all the tramming that went into it uh, before I started doing any test cuts. And then probably another week before uh, I really jumped into an actual project, just getting familiar with the motion software, doing all those things, um, which made everything really easy. Uh, but yeah, the assembly, uh, hands down, super awesome. And uh, I commend Avid uh, for putting the time and effort into that because I mean it was just it was top tier. Okay so number two on the list the AV70S. Now I mean this thing is a huge upgrade than what I'm used to. I, I have I had the carbide uh, spindle um, that thing was 110 it was super awesome uh, but this thing is just I mean it's just a monster. It is ATC ready um, so when they release that next software update I'll be able to you know implement that. That's probably one of the biggest things why I went with the Avid was that ATC ready capability. Uh, I do a lot of tool changes. I do a lot of different you know multiple different tool paths with different tooling. Um, so I'm really excited for that thing to come out. Uh, please Avid uh, send me that as soon as possible. That'd be super awesome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this thing go from a thousand to 24,000 RPMs and it's seven horsepower. I did a couple test cuts and some really thick walnut and I mean, it just ripped right through it. And I did a whole bunch of uh, planing operations where I was flattening a bunch of wood. I have a video on that. I mean, it flattened wood like, I mean, it was crazy. So, you know, these upgraded bits uh, for flattening, these things are, are, I mean, just super awesome and it just, it tears right through it there's uh, just effortlessly and uh, between the tool changes I mean it's just it's so quick um, <clears throat> and it's safe you know it's it's considered a smart spindle so we have lights up here that you know indicate that <clears throat> you know it's safe to actually take the tool out uh, replace it and then when it goes into operation you know it, it tells you so I thought I think that's a really good feature uh, but again, this thing is just, it's just a monster and uh, highly, highly impressed. It's quiet. I love it. So another feature, you know, with the A70S that I really, really enjoy um, are these ISO 30 tool holders. And, you know, with my previous machine, I mean, this was my max. I couldn't go any more uh, than a quarter of an inch as far as a shank. And now I can fit half inch and even three quarter. I couldn't imagine what three quarter would look like uh, in this machine. Number three on the list, the tool height setter. This thing, man, <clears throat> again, you know, I did all my, my tool changes manually on the Shapiko. I had a system where I'd measure, you know, using the, the paper method, you know, using a very thin parchment paper, getting above after I changed the tool to get that uh, increment uh, zero. This thing is super quick. Uh, I load that tool in, I'll automatically come over, measure it based on the height of uh, my original zero plus my wasteboard. And that thing, man, it is, 
It is super cool. Uh, there's a couple of things that I'm a little annoyed with, with, with the, uh, the actual software. It's highly sensitive um, to the touch where if you hit the, uh, the baseboard, that thing will kind of trigger and it'll show up in your, your history as far as it being triggered. So I wish it wasn't so sensitive, but uh, again, like that's just a minute little thing that doesn't really matter. Um, but I absolutely love that thing. Okay, next on the list is the CNC 12 software that comes with the Avid. Now this Centroid uh, software suite, I'm used to very basic, you know, up, down, left, right, you know, set Z. Uh, I, there's a, a couple other options on the carboard, uh, carbide motion software. And that was really all I really needed at the time. Uh, this, whole different ball game. So what I really like about the software is, you know, I already had the, the files come in for Fusion 360 uh, that uh, Avid CNC produced. It was very seamless. All the G code that needed to be implemented for the tool changes and how it communicated with the waste board. Now, there's some things in the background that I think are just phenomenal uh, things that Avid put in. And they have a kind of a save your waste board type application in the background. I didn't really understand it at first. Uh, but after thinking about it and what they implemented, you know, it knows exactly where your waste board is. You're calibrating your tool height uh, directly off of this. Uh, and then there's a safety feature on, on the background in your profile where you can set an offset on that. So uh, if you set that offset to zero, it will not allow your tool to go into your actual waste board. I thought that was a really good feature. Uh, but again, it's kind of like, you know, stuff that's hitting in the background and you don't, you don't really realize it. Uh, and if it's set wrong, it can really be funky on you. So if I was to set an offset of, I don't want anything going, uh, if I accidentally set it to 0.25 above the work surface and I'm cutting a board that's three quarter and I'm going all the way through it, it's gonna stop at 0.5 of an inch. It's not gonna go any farther down. So there's an override that happens and again, if you don't uh, fully realize that that's a thing in the background, it can be very, very frustrating and the troubleshooting will, you know, it doesn't, you don't think that that safety feature is automatically there. So you have to really realize it. And, it, it, and that's why it took that week to really kind of just understand the capability and some of the features that they put into this. And uh, I'm sure I'm gonna learn a lot more as I start working through the software, working different projects, I'll probably come into certain, you know, situations where I don't fully understand why it behaved the way it did. Uh, but that's okay. That's, that's the whole point of learning with a new system. But, you know, I have confidence in Avid that if they put something in there, uh, that it was for the benefit of the machine and the user to be successful. And that's really what you want from a company. And I'm really, really happy with uh, one, the, the company itself and the community that, you know, they, they kind of uh, built with their machines. So super awesome, uh, super excited about the software and start digging into it a little bit more. But between the operations for setting your Z height, your X, Y, super intuitive. It's, there's not a whole lot that goes into it. The tool changes are very easy. Um, and that all gives me confidence that, you know, when I hit go, my cut it will be successful. It's gonna go exactly where I want it to go and do the cut that I, I programmed it to do. Okay, number five, the last one. So let's talk about the spoil board. So I added this uh, the first week and this spoil board was actually my first cut on the machine. And we'll go through some of the features on this um, and why I put the holes on where I put it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so <clears throat> it's, uh, I really, really like it. And uh, the projects that I've done so far, I mean, it's been just super awesome. So let's go through, I'll demo the, the surface board and I'll show you uh, just kind of how, what, what my logic was when I started doing this. And uh, yeah, we'll see what you guys think. For the spoil board, these are about four and uh, a quarter inch wide. Uh, this is seven and a quarter. These widths really didn't really matter to me. Uh, this was, kind of my cheap way um, where I just had a limited amount of MDF and I didn't buy all the T-Track that I really wanted to. Uh, but for what I did have, I wanted to make sure that one, it was kind of proportional and then I would use all the material that I purchased to actually do this spoil board. Uh, so I, I had a couple questions about that. There was really no train of thought. What I didn't want to do is go any, 
like with this distance, I didn't want to go anywhere past uh, six. Uh, these holes are spaced seven and a quarter and then 15 and a half ish uh, for the two. Uh, but what I wanted to do was just an easy uh, method to actually putting material onto the, the actual uh, spoil board. Something that I can get completely square to my uh, gantry on the x-axis that was just completely square whatever I put it onto it. So um, <clears throat> I ended up going really cheap, <laughs> uh, but it, it's 100% effective. This PVC, right, I just cut it to the actual the, the overall diameter of it. Um, and when I put it in, everything is really square and that edge is how I line up a board that I want to put in. Now to do the y-axis, let me tap this in quick. If I put another one here, I officially have a 90 degree angle that I can line things up with. And depending on the height and the material that I want to use, if I'm, this is three quarter, if I want uh, to actually machine something, I can use this as a spacer, get it away from that edge, and then I can put whatever I want on top of it. So it's just a really quick way of getting something completely parallel to my gantry. Super nice to have. Um, and then I'll use shims and wedges uh, to hold my material in. And uh, let's, uh, let me go get a piece of board and I'll walk you through what this actually looks like. At the end of it, I, the, the overall goal, get it completely square and then completely flat to my spoil board. So I'll show you how we do this. All right, so I got a board here. I just wanna go ahead and I just wanna get everything lined up uh, where it's completely you know, centered um, and squared to my work surface. So I'm gonna add just a couple of these in here. And then we'll put another one, yeah, see right about here. <clears throat> Perfect. And so I'm gonna flatten this board. It's not 100% flat. Um, so I'm gonna do a facing operation, but with this height, I can't, right? I'm gonna run into this and this thing's gonna shatter. So having just a little spacer that's square gives me just a little bit more to play with. And I'll put another one on this side. Um, and then I'll start putting my wedges in to actually crimp this in. So let's put one right here in the middle. I'll do this one. Now this board isn't cut square. Um, it's just a, a thing that I've been waiting to use. This is a really nice board, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but with the wedges, wedges are super awesome. And it's just a couple taps. This thing will get completely square to the actual surface. And so I cut a whole bunch of these. It's kind of comical how I did this uh, because I, I did it in a very fast manner. And they're not perfectly, you know, symmetrical wedges, uh, but they are 100% Good to go, so. <clears throat> and that's it. So this board is not going anywhere. And it's a very, just a, a simple, quick thing. I don't have to use these. I can use these T-Tracks if I really wanted to and cinch it down. I have a whole bunch of options, but if I wanted to plane really long pieces of lumber or a slab, I can dictate where that thing winds up on this complete, the complete spoil board, get everything flat, get everything symmetrical, and I know exactly where it's at on my work surface. And then I can do my normal zeroing, and uh, it just makes it really, really fast. So again, I use this method for that round table that I did. And uh, I mean, it was very quick, simple. And I didn't have to re-zero, I didn't have to move around, I knew exactly where that piece of, piece of board was. 
So that's my spoil board. I, you know, it might be, you know, maybe six months down the road where, you know, maybe I find a different method. Uh, but this method is super, super awesome. So, okay, so those are my top five right now for this machine. Again, I've only had it for about 30 days. I got a long ways to go with this. You know, uh, how far I pushed my Shapiko, it took, you know, a couple years to actually do that and get familiar and, uh, especially with the three models that I was making in Fusion 360, I know that it's going to go all the way with it. And uh, I'm super excited. I'm super excited to see how fast this thing can cut uh, and just see, you know, how far I can push it. So uh, super excited. Um, next, next week I have a bunch of videos coming out, uh, a whole bunch of projects each week. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. So. Uh, if you made it this far, appreciate it. Thanks, and uh, I'll see you next week. All right, thanks, guys.